Uh, Did anybody see that TV program? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that 1986, there's the reactor here. This was the reactor, and it exploded. Um, there's, this is the uh, last summer, May, uh, on HBO, from the States. Great show. There's um, five episodes, each an hour long, and you can go online and buy them. Buy all five for about five, ten pounds or so. My family um, reckoned it was the best television they had ever watched. <laughs> and this is despite the fact that they didn't want to watch it. <laughs> yeah. and so that's the best recommendation. It's very good. Um, and the essence is that did they distort the truth? No. And the main thing is no. And did they get the main things right in the sense that the main stories about the lies that were being said? And, and um, the number of people who died. Um, yes, the, 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 the actual TV series is very good, it's very true to the original. Um, it's got some good British actors in it too. This is a still from it, it's quite good actually. They spent a fortune on production value, it's got a money. That's cost a lot of money to make that, I'll tell you. Now, what was the result of uh, Chernobyl in real life? Well, this is Chernobyl here, where Red dot is, yeah. It's about two and a half thousand kilometer mile, two, two, and, a, two and a half thousand kilometers from Britain, yeah. These are cesium 137 levels right, throughout the whole of Europe. Basically, about 40% of Europe's land area was severely contaminated. You can say, why were these not measured? Well, because there was a Balkan war going on at the time. And uh, it's similar to here in Sicily. The Mafia said, you send your helicopters over here and we'll shoot you. And then so we'll stop that. Many people find it very difficult to believe that in fact the UK was involved. Well, here's it in more detail. Yeah, we got it all right. It was May the 1st, uh, 1986, in case you're And of course, it's Japan, it's London. Quadruple explosion, triple meltdown. But we should really be going for of the renewables, and I'm not here to talk about the renewables, but they are going by leaps and bounds. Just, excuse me, just incredible. And um, the newest um, turbines are uh, almost as high as the Shard, or and one, just one, supplies a, a, a small town. So let's look at the renewables. Um, between uh, 2012 and 2017, five years. The solar PV costs from two thirds, and they're going to be keep on falling. Onshore wind fell by 15, another 20, 10 to 20 percent. This is the International Energy Agency. This is these are their data, and since these figures are released, and if anything, the falls have accelerated. So the costs have fallen even um, more quickly than expected. However, if you look at you can look at point, um, the cost of Inkly and uh, point C costs, well, uh, at the end of last year, electricity to France, who are building it, uh, put the cost up at 22.5 billion, the increase of 13, and nuclear will be uh, about 120 pounds per megawatt hour if and when the okay, air starts up. And you compare that with 40 pounds per megawatt hour for offshore wind. Uh, no brainer in many ways. By the way, these high end costs would be, have to be paid by all electricity users, whether you wanted to or not. This is the, the growth in renewables, it's just been astronomical. Uh, this is to, to, uh, to, uh, 2018. Well, it's got uh, a whole year and a bit further on, and it's more like 45% now. You can see all of, the, all of the renewables have been having increases. People will talk about electric cars. Well, I don't agree. Um, the point is that the, if you look at the energy requirements for electric cars, you need to have massive batteries. This is from the San Leaf. This battery goes all the way through to here, by the way. And these two batteries are also under here. This is just a, it's the only picture I can find off the actual batteries. And it's a cutaway view of the, the sun leaf. 
and, and it only shows part of the battery, and 700 kilos altogether. And this is lithium, which is the right element. Um, so you can see that um, almost all of the weight of the car is with these batteries. Well, where do we get the lithium from? Yeah, we get it from lithium mines. And uh, they're even worse in many cases than uranium mines. Well, by the way, these batteries um, last about seven or eight years, perhaps. With improvements, new, newer cars, yeah, they think you can get it up to nine, ten years or so. But the point is, um, you can't recycle these batteries. Oh, I can recycle this and recover it. Um, in terms of weight, um, only about 10% of these batteries can be recycled. So you can see the big headaches ahead. All we're doing is, as, in my view anyway, jumping from the fire plant to the fire. Except that we haven't really identified the fire very well. The point is that if anybody has said, well, I'm going to buy an electric car, they say, well, what are you going to do with the battery after eight years? Because um, each bat these batteries cost about 4,000 pounds. Ah, that's why the cars are so expensive. And to replace them, another 4,000 pounds. Well, I don't think the economics track up to be honest with you. I really don't. <coughs> I will ask you to take on board what Greta Thunberg, who is my hero, uh, what she said in the last year. She said, personally, I'm against nuclear power. It's extremely dangerous, expensive, and time consuming. End of. And my, my lesson, I suppose, is that we should be, we've only got one Earth, and we should be looking after much, much more than we are right now. Thanks so much. That's my thought. Thank you.